Hi, and welcome. We're in the home of Derek Borichter and his family. This home is just like we know Derek. Former Ajax pro soccer player, Celtic pro soccer player. The house is pristine. I have a chance to go ahead and walk through and just see a little bit of private things. It is just as I would expect it. It's clean, it's stylish, and it's very comfortable and very approachable, just like they are. Wow, there's a Buddha. There are so many stories in this house, and I can't wait to discuss with them everything. Everything about their life, everything about how they live now, their family, and even about things like this beautiful image. This must be Jacqueline. There are a lot of pictures in this house. I love this top one. Derek with his two brothers. The love of his life, Jacqueline. And the other loves, the two little ones. Hey, <laughs> I didn't see you there already. <laughs> Where thank you? you, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Mm. How are you? Good. I brought you a little something. Oh, no and I know you're an amazing coffee lover and coffee maker, so maybe we should go ahead and Not enjoy. Stuff, but I can make some good coffee. Uh, oh, like nice. Great. Chocolate, I like it. Thank you very much. Oh, I love it. Let's just, shall we have some coffee together? Yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, I already made some, so uh, I hope you great. like the espresso. Thank you. There just you the way I like it. Perfect. Cheers to that. Then. Perfect. Great to be here. So tell me, I have spoken to so many friends of mine and even Uber and taxi drivers, and they all said to me, what happened to Derek Borta? Because he had so many awards, he's had such a life, he was a force to be reckoned with, and we're so curious. So we're here, and we're going to talk today about the foundation, about your background, and I'd love to hear from you about, you know, your professional soccer career, and, um, you know, talk about everything that makes you who you are and where you are now. Let's talk about your parents first. Can you tell me something about your mom and about your dad and what kind of influence they've had? And do you speak to them? Are they close? Are they, do they live by? Can you tell me something about how you were brought up? Uh, yeah, my, uh, my mother, she has her own beauty salon. Uh, always have and always had um, in, uh, at our house. So she was always there for us, taking care of us when we got out of school. She was the one, uh, you know, making our sandwiches. Uh, and my dad is a teacher, uh, so uh, a very smart man. Um, so hopefully some of the smartness I have, I have from him. <laughs> um, and so my mom is, uh, is a little bit of a businesswoman, if you can say it like that. And, uh, and my dad has the, has the brains, but uh, he became a teacher. Um, and uh, yeah, they always supported me. You know, uh, like I said, I was one of the. Uh, I was had one goal in my life mm -hmm. when I was younger. That was try to become a professional football player. So, you also have to have the the family around you that will support you. Not only Correct. your parents, also your brothers, because um, everything when I was young was was about me. You know, because just a, just an example. Um, when uh, when there was a holiday from school, normally we would always go somewhere and and celebrate our holidays together. But because uh, I uh, was in the academy of FC Twente, my trainings and, and games just kept on continuing. So even though we didn't have school, we still have my matches and my, my practices. So uh, the whole family need to stay home and, and uh, take care of, of me. So it rolled, it rolled so well. My brothers, yeah. So all the whole world changes to uh, change for everybody. Um, and my parents also supported me always. You know, they, they drove me everywhere to every game. They, they watched every game as long as I uh, got them tickets. So. Um, so no, there was there was a there definitely a big influence on on uh, where I am today. Yeah. Did it make you feel guilty because you say that if you start at a young age becoming so good at what you're doing in a pro sport, that things revolve around you? I know that families sometimes they give up their jobs. Sometimes you know they have to go everywhere. They have to take into account. They plan their schedule. Yeah. Is it something that you were guilty about? No. Never. No. Okay. No. Is it something that was spoken of with your brothers about how much time was divided in between the kids? I have spoken to them uh, later on. You know, at that time itself, you don't really bother or care or think about it. 
but afterwards when you were uh, yeah or are in your career or even after your career you, you think like hey uh, I managed to do all that but also because of the support of my family so how it must have been for them um, I, I, I had a conversation with it and, and they never bought, were bothered about it themselves they well. supported they, they supported me they were proud of me mm -hmm. um, so that was also a relief for me that that you know that they are loving and caring brothers and, and want nothing but the best for each other you know, <laughs> it's just from me to them so if i can help them anywhere i will but there was also the other way around and um i'm very thankful and grateful for that that's really nice to have i mean that's i think pro sport is unable to be you know um done without the foundation and the strength of the background of your family definitely obviously you've moved around you are an expat you traveled you know you lived in different countries you're also a repat because you returned to the netherlands um, it's something you and I have spoken about a little bit uh, more often in the time that we have gotten to know each other. What made you move to this location? Because we're not in Oldenzaal, where you were born. And uh, what made you choose for where you are right now? Um, we used to live in Glasgow for three years. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know that at one point your, your contract is done and uh, right. uh, you might come back to the Netherlands. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, but I had an apartment in or yeah at that time had an apartment in Amsterdam that was mm -hmm. rented to an expat. Mm -hmm. um, so we couldn't go back there. And also with a view of having children in the future, um, something, a, a nice house uh, with a garden might be better than an apartment in Amsterdam with a roof terrace. Mm -hmm. um, so we started looking around, uh, you know, we have this great app called Funda where you can uh, find beautiful homes. Yep. Um, so I, I, well, almost every day I had a look on Funda, like what's what's there for property, you know, what, what can we buy, what can we afford, uh, what location. Mm -hmm. So automatically, because I really like Amsterdam uh, and uh, I really like my old, uh, you know, city where I was. Uh, Your stomping ground, right, yeah, exactly. right. I, but I didn't, I didn't have the feel that I need to go back there. I really like my time in Amsterdam when I played for Ajax, so I, I thought, you know, we're going to live close to Amsterdam again. And uh, it was also my life, you know, mm -hmm. meeting a lot of friends here. And uh, so I was like, uh, not. It, it is uh, around Amsterdam. So started looking in Amsterdam, around Amsterdam, draw a big circle, like uh, uh, how far do we want to live from Amsterdam? So eventually uh, we saw uh, this house, uh, because it's a, it's a new build, we saw this in a 3D um, drawing on Funda, and contacted the agency uh, that, that sold this house, and uh, they said, yeah, uh, if you really want this house, uh, come and have a chat with us. Mm -hmm. So we did, <clears throat> and um, I think, uh, well, the first meeting and, and when they started uh, building this house was, uh, was a couple of weeks uh, in between. So uh, everything went really fast. And uh, that's how I also like to uh, to do it. To that is part of your character. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're no nonsense. If you, want, if you want something, go for, go for it. Nonsense. So uh, yeah, um, um, we, uh, but they bought this, uh, we bought this house, but they started building it uh, soon after. And uh, when we uh, came back from, from Glasgow uh, after my contract was, was done there, we, uh, we could move in here straight away. So it was a perfect item. You are an, a, a go-getter, and I think it's part of the strength of being a pro athlete. I understand completely. So we're going to talk about your professional career, about the rest of the family in a minute. I would like to know, what is it like when you come back uh, from having lived abroad, you've been an expat, and you come back? What does that do with your families and your friends while you were gone? Um, was there time to even stay in touch? I mean, is it was it a FaceTime moment? Was it not? Was it calls? How do you stay in touch with your family? Also for people who are planning on leaving or other athletes that are about to enter into that. Well, your closest friends or, or the, your best friends, you will always keep in touch with them. Um, along the way, you might lose friends as well uh, uh, because for some reason, I don't know, uh, you don't get in touch that much anymore or... Mm -hmm. Uh, there's a difference of, of uh, you know, uh, living your life. I don't know, but in my experience, I, I've made friends also in Glasgow, mm. still people that we we, uh, we see today, um, and also the other way around, that we, we lose people. Um, but this is fine, you know, I only, only want to surround myself with uh, with the best positive uh, people right. that can help my life further. Um, and I don't want to deal with negativism, negativism mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, people that uh, are only uh, a struggle. Yeah, so, I understand. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite simple for me. I, I feel the both kind of people and uh, my life is good right now, you know? I only have uh, good, positive people around me. It's great. It's so good that you just recently went to Glasgow. I did, yeah. And how was that? When was the last time you went? 
I think it was already a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. it, it's more difficult now uh, since we have children. Yes. Especially young ones. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, yes, you're right. Um, the time between Christmas and, and New Year's Eve, mm -hmm. uh, we uh, went back to Glasgow and also a day in Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. We uh, stayed with friends. Um, they took care of us. Uh, Amazingly, mm -hmm. um, and we had the best times of our life. Is it, all the little bits. Is it difficult? Was it was it strange going back? Do you miss uh, anything? No, I, no, I, no, because it, it's a, it feels like a second home. It's mm -hmm. a totally different country than, than the Netherlands. But yeah. we had such a good time in Glasgow that uh, uh, it feels like a second home. Mm -hmm. you, st you still know your way around the city. Mm -hmm. you, know, you still know the the, the good restaurants mm -hmm. uh, and um, and especially the people. They have uh, the very polite. Mm -hmm. They have also a, a good mindset, uh, and um, I like spending time there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's that difference? Is it a place you'll ever end up returning to? You think? Uh, well, like I said, uh, I went back there to visit friends, mm -hmm. um, and hopefully we can also do business together. Uh, I recently invested in him as well, so well that's a different story. Uh, we'll get to that. Uh, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Yeah. But, yes. um, it's quite funny because there's still uh, real estate uh, for sale there for like thirty thousand uh, pounds. Oh wow! It's impossible in the Netherlands, but yeah, everyone's running over to Glasgow right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I know that uh, there is uh, there are opportunities there, mm -hmm. and that I might uh, explore also mm -hmm. with a friend of mine. So, mm -hmm. um, but that is you know that that's something for the future. That's not uh, not for now, but uh, mm -hmm. it brings opportunities. So, I wouldn't stay there for 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 living there, mm -hmm. but I might go back there every, uh, now and then uh, for business, uh, mm -hmm. for pleasure, for whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Well, let's talk about some more things. Perfect, let's do that. We're uh, at the table right now, one of the many tables in your house. Um, and I love this part of the house because of the fact that um, there are three very important pictures, beautiful photos uh, of the family. And I'd like to discuss a little bit about what each photo represents. Obviously, uh, for people who actually know you as a pro soccer player, this is a, a big moment in your career. Um, I would like to not so much speak about when this picture was taken, but I would like to speak about 2012. Okay. Um, your pro soccer career, where were you in 2012 and what happened? Where was I in 2012 and what happened? Uh, well, many things happened, um, but uh, it was the start of my, uh, my career at Ajax. I started off really well. Um, made myself in the in the first uh, first eleven uh, the, the the team. I started playing every single week, but um, when I played for RKC Waalwijk, uh, the previous club, we had one match a week, <clears throat> and one match a week was fine for my body. You know, I could uh, work myself up to that uh, to that moment. And uh, when it was uh, game day, then I would give everything, and then I had a week to recover again. But when I signed for Ajax, we didn't have one week uh, one game a week. We had at least two or three games a week, and since I started playing every single uh, single game, my body started um, um, struggling a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I started feeling pains that I've never felt before, and one of the pains was in my back. So um, at first I was like, okay, uh, what is this? Uh, what 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 can I do about it? Um, so uh, I told the medical staff of I like I have pain in my back, but I don't know what it is. So. They, we did some we did some tests. Uh, also went to the hospital. We did a, a MRI scan. We did um, uh, ultrasound uh, scan. Everything, and, uh, and they could see that there was like a fluid in my back. So there was something wrong. But mm -hmm. what 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 it cost? They had no clue. Mm -hmm. So every time I took uh, a couple of weeks off, um, and then started uh, building up again, training again, and I, I kept on feeling pain. Um, during the training, too. during the uh, training session, yeah, and uh, we just couldn't find uh, find uh, the the problem, um, and yeah, the, the pain kept uh, kept on getting worse and worse and worse. Eventually, I started playing again, and then I had a game against uh, FC Utrecht, and even though I had pain in my back, I had the painkillers. Uh, there was one moment where I wanted to control the ball, but there was uh, an opponent in my back, and he hit me with his knee on the sore spot in my back and oh. I just could crawl inside because the, the pain in my back was excruciating. So exactly. So, um, again, took some time off, you know, uh, and when I was having a rest for like two, three, four weeks, uh, I felt okay. Start training back on the pitch again. One wrong twist with my back or one wrong move or whatever, I could crawl back inside because the, the pain was like, Oof. was not able to yeah. handle it. 
There was one moment where you were even in a restaurant. You were, I believe, with uh, Jacqueline and with your brother. Um, and then you had a pain in your side and you you literally were off to the hospital. Yeah, well, there was still the moment where we didn't know what uh, what actually uh, caused the, the pain in my, in my back. But anyway, um, yeah, I was having a, a nice dinner. Um, and then out of the... Or out of the blue, I don't know what happened. Maybe I made the wrong whoop or, or, or twist, whatever. But uh, a, a pain uh, uh, came in my back, and uh, yeah, it was was unbelievable. Um, I couldn't get up or get out of the chair. Mm -hmm. So eventually, my my brother and, uh, and and Jacqueline had to help me up, get out of that seat, and mm -hmm. and uh, walk me back to the car because it was uh, unbearable. Um, and that was also the moment where I thought, like, this is this is wrong. Something is is definitely wrong. So. Eventually, when I uh, got back to Ajax, we uh, uh, went back to the hospital again, uh, made a CT scan this time. Ah. And, and the CT scan, the scan finally, um, you know... Found the problem? Found the problem, and it was like a, I had a, a broken bone in my back. It was... Uh, you know, one of your vertebrae were, was, was broken? It just like snapped, yeah, back in half. And you walked and you had played with a broken vertebrae at that time? Um, I think... Uh, I had a, like a first when you uh, start you know first start, start struggling with my back, maybe slight uh, discomfort, like cracks, a little cracks. Oh, in my, in my yeah. bone, you know. Mm -hmm. But that hit when I played that game with the with, with the knee. knee in my back. The yeah, moment it snapped, and shortly after I had the dinner in the restaurant, and and there was a moment as well that I thought like, what this this is wrong. What did the club doctor do? What does the staff do? I mean, obviously. These days, with injuries happening on the field, look at, God forbid, Daly and everyone else, you know, people, I think, are running uh, twice as fast. Um, obviously, when you're down and you're not getting up, that is, is, a, is a, maybe is an acute signal. But what was it like those days? Do you see difference the way it was compared to what it is now? Uh, how people... If how the club reacts to injuries, whether you uh, know, we had the best or... medical staff uh, at Ajax at that time, mm -hmm. um, so I don't blame them for anything. No, no, no. Uh, no, eventually, when we found the problem in my back, we uh, we found uh, another way of treating it. Mm -hmm. like, what how do about it? Well, pure rest. That was the only thing they could do. Like which means you couldn't play nothing. Yeah, just to, you know, you can come to the club, but you could do cycling or do some, I don't know. Uh, but anyway. Uh, rest you know nothing for my back so okay mm -hmm. uh, and then uh once every one or two weeks go back to the hospital make a ct scan again see what uh what's the situation like now mm -hmm. um and finally when the doctor said like okay your, your back is uh almost back to full strength again that was the moment where we can start uh, building up our training sessions again mm -hmm. so that's what we did uh eventually they wanted to get the the, the rough edges of the, of the pain mm -hmm. off as well mm -hmm. so they put some uh, some fluid in my back and injections, injections, exactly, um, and has also. Uh, it's a nice feeling. Yeah, and while they mm -hmm. went inside with a needle with electricity on it, oh, just to find the the right spot. Shock therapy. When they, yeah, it's just, no, let's try. Yeah, no. So they were there with a the needle, put some electricity on it. When they were in the right spot, where the where the problem was, ah, oh, I was. I mean, you were uh, to the ceiling. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, they found the right spot, put the fluid there, and uh, from that moment on, I could start building up my my training sessions again. Mm. You know, I was uh, back to full um, full strength, mm -hmm. uh, and because I had uh, built up a lot of uh, credits, uh, I was in the first eleven straight away. I think I played four games, which in which I scored three goals again. So yeah. I was back to be. I was happy to be back. The, the fans, the club, everybody, everybody was happy that I was back. But in the fourth game, uh, right before the end of the season. Um, I played a game. I made a one one v one with a, with an opponent, um, and then he made. Can you tackle. explain for people? Sorry, one v one don't... is so like a, a one on one situation where I try to pass my opponent, mm -hmm. know, dribbling, and then uh, score a goal, give an assist, whatever. Um, so that was uh, my plan. Uh, but then he made a tackle, and I fell hard on my back uh, while he was tackling me, and um, I couldn't get up. So I was like, oh no, the, the pain in my back got back again. But this time it wasn't the old uh, crack, but it was a new one. A new injury. A new injury, same, uh, not, not the same, uh, you know, you have different levels, like yes. uh, LV, L4. Yeah, yeah, you're different uh, vertebrae. So exactly, so this was uh, L5 now, that was snapped. Was that not a warning? Th this is just pure bad luck. Because, uh, is that what you I, thought? Uh, yeah, I actually at that time thought that I might have, uh, um, like, uh, uh, bad bones. Uh, oh, um, like they might, softer bones? Yeah, like that they might crack more, more mm. than other ones. Mm. So they did a bone test in the hospital as well, and I had the best bones ever, and nothing <laughs> wrong with that. It's just pure, pure bad luck. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Uh-huh. And so that, 
You said at that time that, um, you know, during that one night, your family was with you and your Jacqueline and your brother were with you. I have something that someone wants to say. Um, I've known you for uh, almost uh, 33 years, so there's so much to tell. Um, it's all the guy. little time that I have during this video. Um, I just wanted to say that Derek is one of the most loving, caring persons there will ever be. He has a very small heart. Uh, he's very principled. That is something that uh, many people will tell about him. But when you get to know him and you're in his circle of trust, you could say, uh, he will do everything for you. Um, so I just want to say, Derek, thank you for everything you've brought also in my life. Uh, we're very competitive, but that's also that's something that has brought me very much. Um, and I uh, just want to say uh, thank you so much uh, and keep going on what you're going to do. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Love you. Oh, yeah. what a guy. Yeah. That is so sweet. That was a little oh, surprise. What a surprise as well. I'm did, glad. I didn't expect this. No, I, I, um, I'm glad I'm glad I hit it from you. A little bit uh, emotional. Of the air. That's, that's okay. Yeah. Well, as we say, breathe. I think, yeah, you're wondering why I'm holding my phone, right? Um, I think no, that... I understand why. <laughs> Family is um, is everything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I know that uh, through hard times, and just as like through good times, it's important to uh, to lean on the ones that you love. So I see that your brothers are important to you. I see that Jacqueline's important to you. Obviously, your whole family is important to you. And um, home is where the heart is, I always say. Definitely. Picture number two. It's gorgeous. It's the love of your life, Jacqueline. And it's Julia, who looks like she's a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> and it's Dean. Tell me, how did you choose the names of the children? Uh, Julia has always been on my mind. I always said when I was a kid myself, if I ever get a daughter, I will call it Julia. Oh, really? Um, there's also the song in Holland uh, from Henk Westbroek. Uh, it's a song about uh, a beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. Her name is uh, Julia, and he reveals that name at the end of the song. Uh, it's a beautiful song, a uh, beautiful name. So uh, I said, if I ever get a daughter, you have a new name. And Chuckney said, I agree. So, uh, well, the, our first child was uh, a, a girl. So uh, there you go. Hank Happy, oh. Mr. Westbrook. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we'll text him later. Like, <laughs> um, and uh, Dean, yeah, we, we went on, uh, I went on, uh, uh, we both have lists, me and Chuckney, we both have lists. Like, mm -hmm. I, I like these names, she likes these names, and both. Uh, both in the both lists, I uh, disagree with her list. She disagreed with my list. Oh. Um, so we couldn't find a name. But then I was uh, a weekend away, uh, Formula One, and there was a, a guy uh, who came along as well. And his name was Dan. That's, that's mm -hmm. Dutch name. Very Dutch. Yeah, but his friends kept on saying, or kept on calling him Dean. I was like, hey, that's a cool name, Dean. Mm -hmm. So I uh, phoned Chaplin. I said, what do you think of the name Dean? And Chaplin said, yeah, I quite like it. So then... Uh, I said that, well, they... It, quick decision? Oh, uh, qu yeah, exactly. Which is a quick decision. Uh, <laughs> Over the phone during okay. Formula One. I, I, I said that your list was bad. You said my list was bad. Now we finally have a name that we both think like, oh, that sounds quite cool. Let's just stick with this one and, and name him Dean. And they said, yeah, well, you're right. So eventually uh, he was born and uh, the name Dean was also born with uh, with him. So oh, nice. Uh, yeah. So I'd like to get to Jacqueline in a minute, but I'd like to talk about you being a dad because I know you love your children who doesn't as a father, but I know you love them to death. I know that you like to sometimes share a little social media moments with the kids. Um, what happened when, um, you know, obviously from the soccer time and then afterwards you decided or you had children, what did that do with your life and especially how did it remind you of your own young childhood? Uh, well, there are many things uh, in your own childhood where, where you think like, oh, this is great uh, or, or this is not great. There have been certain aspects uh, how I was raised where I, I think like, oh, yeah, I agree. Uh, also certain, uh, certain parts where I, where I don't, agree, uh, don't agree. And I think that as a parent, you find your own mix of how you want to raise your children. Mm -hmm. What you, what do you think it's uh, important mm -hmm. uh, to give up? Um, so um, it has been a big learning curve mm -hmm. uh, because, especially with with Yuya when she was born, um, you're a new dad. Everything is new. Uh, you never changed a diaper before, and then, um, but you have to learn that along the way. Uh, eventually, when she starts getting older and she has a personality of her own. Mm -hmm. um, you have to deal with that as well. And she has a quite a, quite a strong personality. She's now how old? 
She's now five years old. And she doesn't <laughs> take no for an answer. Yeah, I wonder where that comes from. Yeah, you know, with discussions, you know, uh, she has that for me. <laughs> uh, because if I don't agree with uh, somebody, then I will also want You'll to, tell them, uh, yeah. yeah. But I also yeah. want to hear their argument, like, why do you give me a no? Mm -hmm. um, so, um, yeah, she got that definitely from me. Um, but uh, that's also something that you have to learn and, and deal with and, uh, uh, and raise them both as a strong individual. Mm -hmm. Does sport play uh, something in their life? I know they're very uh, small. They're, yeah. Dean is about to be three and Julia's five. Do you already, do they already have sports? You guys are already uh, um, doing, going to a football practice. Oh, you're kidding. Every Wednesday and every Saturday she's on the pitch. Ish, do you think she's going to get further? Do you think she has a passion? Is that something? Sometimes when uh, we're well, like, oh, well, I always go and watch because I think support is very important. Are you are you on the line screaming and yelling nah, like like sometimes we have not, fanatic no, not, parents? No, I am fan <laughs> definitely a fanatic. Yeah, mm -hmm. but no, no, not necessarily screaming or yelling, but uh, giving her tips like, "Hey, you can do this better." Mm -hmm. Or sometimes when I see her on the pitch, I see a little dad's moves in between as well. <laughs> so uh, that's why she's also uh, uh, doing uh, going to dance. Okay, uh, also, new trend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and she's uh, doing swimming right now. Uh -huh. So like three sports. Good. And, and Dean, yeah, he's only two, but uh, every Sunday there's a, uh, uh, for toddlers, there's like a, a, a football session, mm -hmm. uh, play wise with the ball. Um, and he really enjoys that as well. So I take him on a, on a Sunday and go and play football with him. Mm. Yeah. Do you talk to your parents about being a dad? Uh, with my mom, yes. Uh, but the things that happened in the past between me and my family. Uh, and that caused that me and my dad are not speaking to each other anymore. You're not speaking at all? Not at all, no. They haven't uh, even uh, seen Julia and Dean. So, uh, They've never met no, each other. We had a little uh, argument, a little fight uh, when Shani was pregnant. Um, and we have a sur we have a different mentality, you know, where, where I can say sorry for the things I've done or said or whatever. Um, I can do that, but he can't. He's just too stubborn. And uh, I'm stubborn too. Your father. But I can Yeah, my father, yeah. I'm stubborn too, but... At least I can say uh, I'm sorry for the things I've said or caused or whatever. But he said, uh, no, I'm, uh, I, don't, I don't want to do that. I don't want to say sorry. And in my opinion, where two people fight are two people in the wrong and can apologize to each other, especially when they love each other. But uh, he, he didn't want to do that. What would you say to him? There's a, there's a possibility that he sees this. What would be the first thing you would say to him if he would see him in person? What would you say to him? For, uh, uh, it's, it's been such a long time now, you know, I've moved on with my life. I'm happy with, happy with my life. I have my whole family now. I think he will miss out more than uh, than myself at the moment. So, uh, Is he welcome to contact you? Uh, it's hard to say. Yeah. So many things have uh, happened there and, and, uh, and uh, you know, after such a long time, eventually it's, it's, it's good. You know? You know the problem with, with having stubborn sons, daughters, or parents, there's always one waiting for the other to go ahead and take the first, make the first move. And sometimes it's too late. I've known you uh, in a little bit longer than today. It's not something that you're going to want. It's also something that you're going to want. You're going to want a grandmother and a grandfather in their life. Moreover, that your children may later on want to meet grab well, I, what happens in the beginning that but, i want to surround myself with positive uh people well, that the children will help your life further and 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 uh, struggles like this i don't want to uh, stand still in the past i just want to keep moving keep moving forward mm -hmm. so it, like i said it's good okay well no message to dad no not really no okay that's it you surprises for me no oh, no i have surprises for you but I have other surprises. I think it's important. Do you talk to your um, guy friends? Are there any soccer friends that are that you're best friends with? Not players? No. no it's, uh, are there friends from Oldenzaal? Who are your uh, friends? I speak to some some guys from Oldenzaal, but mm -hmm. not, uh, not that much because I left Oldenzaal when I was uh, 15 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, a long time ago. A long time ago, exactly. And uh, every time you go somewhere, you meet new people. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have a click with them, sometimes you don't. But uh, especially with when you play football, mm -hmm. at least in, in, in uh, my career, I never stayed uh, for more than two or three years uh, at a club. So mm -hmm. uh, you're bonding for two, three years, then mm -hmm. you move to another club. And then because you are, are in a totally different environment, um, you keep on texting or calling each other once in a while. But after a while, 
they just you know it dies down a little dies. bit yeah a little bit yeah and when you see each other it's good and, and it will be fun again but mm-hmm. i don't know uh, the, the you don't keep in touch that much as what you hoped or mm-hmm. don't want it to be but uh that's also life i understand wise words thank you that's an important picture yeah. let's go to jacqueline well I call her sometimes Jacqueline, sometimes Jackie, sometimes Jacqueline. Yeah, well, you say, yeah. you say. Well, I'm sure her parents said, Schatje. Schatje. <laughs> Schatje in Dutch, Dutch means sweetheart. Schatje. It's anything with a huh. Um, so tell me, when did you meet? Where did you meet? How did you meet? Um, I had my apartment in Amsterdam. And uh, a friend of mine uh, sometimes stayed there. I was already in, in Glasgow, so okay. I, I moved out. Uh, but the apartment was still uh, uh, available. I wanted to rent it out, but uh, at the time was still uh, well uh, not rented. So mm-hmm. a friend of mine sometimes uh, stayed in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, he had the key, and um, uh, one time he asked me like, "Hey, this weekend I'm going out for a party. Um, can I stay in your apartment?" And uh, I said, "Yeah, that's fine." He said, "But can I also bring some some friends? You know, because me and my girlfriend want to stay in your apartment, and she wants to bring two friends." And I said, yeah, that's fine. Uh, I only have one rule. Uh, that is that you uh, uh, take care of the apartment and when you leave, leave it clean, you know? The way you found it. Yeah. Right, so, yeah. Uh, I think that's normal. Okay. Common sense. Okay. So uh, he always did that, so that's fine. Um, and then uh, he had his night out. And the day after, he texted me and said, like, uh, oh, I've been on this night out and the the, the most beautiful girls uh, were, uh, were with me. I said, oh. I said, uh, tell me more. <laughs> and he said, uh, he, he gave me two names. Uh, so I, I looked the first one up, and her name was uh, Jacqueline Stamix. Uh-huh. On, uh, mm-hmm. Her name. Mm-hmm. And well, that photo that you see there, that's, that was her profile picture. At the that was her profile picture. <laughs> <laughs> ah. So uh, I started, was like, whoa, who is this? Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, I, I couldn't uh, help myself, but I started uh, sending her a text, but I was like, what was the first thing you said to her? Well, because that thing is, uh, she's Miss Netherlands. Yeah, exactly. So a lot of attention. Mm. All kinds of people, all kinds of guys. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I wanted to uh, go on Facebook and send her a text message uh, in which I will would be noticed. Uh huh. I told the other guy. Right, not be one of the guys. Uh, the, I'm a very rich football player. And <laughs> <laughs> definitely not. Yeah, and she <laughs> ran. This is a joke. <laughs> this is a joke. No, uh, no, I just, I, I have no idea what I what I said, uh, but uh, I remember that uh, she did respond to mm-hmm. my uh, mm-hmm. to me. Mm-hmm. And uh, from that moment on, we kept on sending messages to each other. And uh, eventually we FaceTimed because, uh, you know, sending messages is one thing. Right. And looking at photos is another thing. Yes. But wanting to see each other in Next well, step. real life uh, wasn't possible because I was in Scotland. And at that time, she was in Indonesia trying to become Miss Netherlands. Miss World. She was she won Miss Netherlands. Right. Um, so we couldn't tell, uh, see each other in real life yet, mm-hmm. uh, but we could we could uh, see each other over FaceTime. Mm-hmm. So that's what we did. Mm-hmm. That was the first time they just see like uh, 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 you know moving images on the other side right. of the phone and uh, having a, a better view of how somebody looks and how somebody mm-hmm. talks and how somebody is. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that uh, well, that connection we had that grew stronger and stronger and stronger, and uh, eventually after a month uh, we could see each other. She oh wow, we knew she it took a month. Yeah, to to Holland, and the next day she took the flight to Glasgow, and she stayed there uh, like for five days uh, with me, and that was the moment that we first saw each other. So, uh, with a lot of tension, we uh, love at first sight. I waited, I waited uh, in the, the traffic, uh, oh, sorry, the the airport uh, mm-hmm. terminal, uh, the rifle hall, and uh, she came through the through the gates, and uh, and that was that was it. The rest is history. The rest is history. Yeah. What makes her different to other women? Anyway. Well, looks obviously. Because she's a very yeah. Okay, you just you just heard a lot of other women now, now, but she's gorgeous. But no, she's beautiful. The first thing that uh, that uh, is mm-hmm. important to me is, is yeah. the attractiveness. Uh, uh, okay, the attraction, uh, right? Yeah, you mm-hmm. can have that, and she does. She doesn't definitely have. Uh, she's she definitely has that. <laughs> um, and of course, her personality as well. She's <laughs> very sweet and caring, and uh, and a good mom for the for the kids as well. Very important. Even though she's beautiful and she has brains, you mm-hmm. know, but I think that's also important. Very attractive, also. And yeah. brains, right? So I want uh, or that's uh, the things that are important to me as well. I want a woman that can uh, take care of herself, and uh, she definitely can do that. Mm. Yeah. Here comes a surprise because somebody wants to say something to you. Is it shocking? 
Derek is de meest liefdevolle, oprechte en ondersteunende partner uh, en vader van onze twee prachtige kinderen die ik mij maar had kunnen wensen. Hij is er altijd voor ons, hij geeft ons heel veel liefde, hij houdt van knuffelen, um, van gek doen, stoeien. Um, maar het mooie vind ik is dat hij um, echt veel tijd samen spendeert met de kinderen. Hij is er echt voor ze. Naast ook als partner had ik me geen betere partner kunnen wensen. Hij geeft me heel veel liefde. Um, hij is oprecht. Hij probeert mij het beste bij mij naar boven te halen. Hij ondersteunt me in mijn dromen. Hij is wel vrij direct. Dus wat hij denkt en wat hij vindt, dat deelt hij. Maar goed, daardoor weet ik wel wat ik aan hem heb. Dus ik denk echt dat wij met z'n vieren een gouden team zijn. Nou, dat is het. The love of your life, obviously in Dutch, but it will be in subtitles. Yeah. I think it's really important. I heard that she's not at the house, so we are actually going to visit her at the company, yeah. their office. Yeah. Well, I think she might be done soon with, uh, because she's in Clyde's uh, number. Right, right. Uh, well, she might be uh, done soon and then uh, we will uh, pop in and uh, see her. So now we're in another special part of the house, the living room. What do you call it again? The Netflix and chill room. The Netflix and chill room, really nice. So what happens after soccer? You have now Baby Glimpse, the company, together with Jacqueline. And I do see something over there. What's that? Well, recently, uh, you know, I, I told you about my uh, uh, story in, um, uh, in Scotland. Right. And, uh, Let's get back. Yeah, exactly. And uh, we have some friends there. And one of my friends is in Belts. He uh, does nothing else but uh, designing the best belts in the world. What's his name? Christian McLeod. Mm -hmm. So that's why. Ah, that uh, see, yeah. Yeah. right. And uh, right. I recently invested in him in in, uh, in his company. Uh, so great. He has it made with straps. Oh, really nice. Made. Straps, uh, you can, uh, um, you know, these are. You like custom make your belts? Yeah, well, this is really? a black side and a brown side. You can. Uh, oh, right. Uh, so, and uh, you can uh, buy your own buckle with it as well. That, that goes with are those his initials? This is right, great. Right. If you look at like like this, it looks like a padlock. Oh wow, yes, that's right. So this is de his design. Okay, amazing. So it looks like a padlock. So you decided to every belt has its own. Uh, every buckle has its own story as well. But you should uh, check his website out and uh, keep for yourself. Okay, great. How did you come across them? How do you know him? Um, well, Jacqueline uh, was working in Scotland. Uh, she was uh, there in a the fashion store. Uh, and he was working in the same store because it, it's quite a high-end store and he wanted to get his belts uh, uh, in that store to be sold. Um, and then I was looking for a belt one day, like a white belt, because mm -hmm. I like to wear trainers, white trainers. Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, my girlfriend said, uh, why don't you uh, speak to Christian? He has his own uh, brands and belts. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, maybe he has a nice white belt for you. Uh, so I asked her, like, okay, does he have a website? And yes, uh, he did. Uh, so I checked his website out and exactly the kind of belt that I was looking for he was selling. Great. And uh, I don't care if it's a, a major brand or a brand that I don't know. If I, I like believe it. If I like, so, well, if I like something that I don't care who's it from, I will wear it. Mm -hmm. So um, so yeah, I, I uh, um, spoke with him because uh, I was a Celtic player at the time. So for him to give me a belt is a little bit of like free business. Mm -hmm. You know, he gives me a belt and hopefully I will put something on my social media like, hey, hey I'm wearing right. a Christian McLeod belt. So he gave me one for free and I met him for the first time and instantly we had a connection. He was uh, just a, a great guy, good mm -hmm. company. And um, well, he felt the same, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, so we became friends and eventually I, I even helped him uh, getting the whole Celtic team in uh, Christian McLeod belts. No, you did Quite good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So is fashion part of your passion for new business? How do you choose what you invest in? Uh, well, the funny thing is, I'm also in this uh, small invest uh, investment group. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like uh, athletes and, and former athletes. That Anyone we know? Yeah, well, if you're into football, uh, cycling, basketball, then yeah, you know, our viewers are. Yeah, they, so they can check. It. It's, it's called a company called uh, Joint Capital. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, as a, uh, uh, we all bring in some money. Mm -hmm. It's all in, in one big amount. Right. We are joint capital, right. and that goes out as an investment uh, in uh, in a company, mm -hmm. especially in startups. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, we work differently than other uh, investment companies because we also try to uh, help the company itself with growing. 
Uh, and that can mean with uh, a post on social media, that can mean uh, getting them into certain stores or whatever. <laughs> uh, so eventually the company itself will benefit, but also us because we want to have our investment back mm -hmm. multiplied by I don't know how many. Mm -hmm. But uh, so that's the idea. Um, and uh, yeah, that, uh, it's, it's quite nice to be in a group like that. You're going to get a lot of emails now. You know that, right? It's fine. You? It's fine. As long as uh, if it's businesses that we believe in and that we think like, hey, this is something really cool the world needs. Then yeah, we're ready. Then that's you're ready. Amazing. Let's go look at Baby Glimpse, your business. Thank you. Yes, come in. Hi. Hey, oh, nice hi. to finally nice be to here. Great hi. to be able to visit Welcome. Baby Glimpse. Thank yes. you so much. Shall I take a seat? Yes, come on. Okay. okay. So Jacqueline, we're finally here at Baby Glimpse. Yes. Your office, oh. your practice, and that of Derek's together, a partnership in business. Yes. It is so nice to be here. We're in the little town of Laren, which is not very far away from Amsterdam. No, really close no, by. Really yeah. close. Um, new place, but I want to get um, back to and start with your life when you first met the love of your life and suddenly he says, I have a new contract and I need you to please move with me to Glasgow. Yeah. What happened? Uh, it happens a lot. Um, it was a big change in my life, to be honest. Um, at the time, I was working as a midwife, and I was also just um, Miss Holland, Miss Netherlands. Right. Um, so I had my life over here in Holland. You had a big career. Um, yeah, but on the other hand, I felt totally in love with him. So when he said, well, I, I, I'm going to move to Scotland, he just moved over there for, I think, three weeks. Uh, for me, it was a really easy decision to, well, quit everything over here and go there. I thought in the worst scenario, I'm going to be back in three months and I'm going to pick up uh, my job and everything. But yeah, so I, I went for it. I, uh, left, I quit my job, packed my bag and I went to Scotland. Mm. Yeah. Expat life. Oh yeah. my goodness. And so then you came to Scotland and yeah. what was it like? Completely different than Holland. Yeah. The Netherlands. Yeah. Just uh, no sun at all. <laughs> it's really uh, and making new friends. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, it, it's nice to, um, at the beginning, I felt really lonely because you're coming in a new country, you don't know anyone, uh, you go to some matches and then you met some other uh, football um, women and that's really nice to to meet other people over there who are in the same position. But on the other hand, I was a lot alone at home waiting when he was coming back. Yeah. And at the beginning, I wanted to start as a midwife over there as well. So I uh, tried to um, get all my papers ready well, it was so hard to get everything uh, certified, certified right. over there. Uh, it took me, um, um, I was busy with it for two years mm -hmm. and then I thought I'm going to stop with it. Right. But um, during when we were living over there, I thought um, I just want to do something for myself. I want to build up my own um, social life. So right. I started working as a model over yeah. there where I met a lot of uh, other girls, really right. nice Scottish girls. Mm -hmm. And I also started working in a uh, fashion uh, store. Oh, wow. You yeah. selling clothes and yeah. everything. And good I, combination. Yeah, mm. but yeah, it's, I'm not really a good seller in clothes, but I just loved being uh, surrounded with Scottish people, you know what I mean? people having a social life. So we really built up a, a social life over there, made some good friends and mm -hmm. still seeing these friends. Ah, so, uh, yeah. just I talked to Derek about just going to Glasgow. What I wanted to ask is, how do you go from um, leaving the Netherlands, going to Glasgow, uh, being a model in the meantime, obviously mid the wife background, and then now, boom, baby glimpse. Yeah. Great practice. I mean, yeah. look at us right behind us. I see a lot of well-known people, um, and that means that you're trusted. So how do you go from you know, one country to another country and then come back and then I have to get used to it and set up a beautiful, um, you know, sonogram practice. Yeah. Well, it, it, they have the last, the last years, to be honest. Um, well, my, uh, my uh, license of being a midwife, it went expire. So at the end, I went back to Holland when there was still Scotland really? and I um, started working as a midwife over here. Uh, and then I traveled every two weeks up and down. So two weeks in Holland, I was working. The famous two, two travel weeks. trip. Right. right. Because I thought, I don't want to let my license expire, mm -hmm. so I cannot work anymore. Um, and after three years, uh, there I came back to Holland. So I was then totally um, full-time working as a midwife. Mm -hmm. um, and then I found my um, 
um, my uh, passion in uh, ultrasound. Right. I really loved it. And um, Derek saw also an opportunity in it. So oh. we both uh, had the idea, well, let's start an old business in the ultrasound. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's what we did. We started really small. I was still working as a midwife and he helped me um, behind the scenes with everything, mm -hmm. uh, organize everything. And it's, yeah, it, it, it was growing so fast. Mm -hmm. And so after a year, I, I quit as a midwife mm -hmm. and now I'm totally uh, working. Uh, Dedicated full time to the company. Yeah, uh, to be oh, okay. yeah, helping it. Well, it looks amazing. Um, we're talking about Derek. Welcome. Let's bring him in. Let's do it. Derek? Somebody call me. There he is. <laughs> oh, big partner. <laughs> oh, super team. So now we're talking about business and we're talking about Baby Glimpse and it looks amazing here. Okay. So exactly. I want to ask um, you two, what makes Baby Glimpse different from all the other um, ultrasound practices? So it's a question for me? For sure. Then. You guys can decide. <laughs> no, it's very business. So go ahead. Go ahead. Um, well, first of all, of course, I'm um, because I'm a midwife. Mm -hmm. uh, not every practice uh, or ultrasound practice is made by a, a midwife. So if there is something medical, um, I can really see a medical stuff on the mm -hmm. ultrasound. So it's not only like happy pictures and uh, telling about the gender. Mm -hmm. I'm really checking the whole baby medically. Um, of course, I'm passionate about it. So mm -hmm. it's, yeah, I'm, I'm really, I'm trying to make it a real special moment for the people if they are mm -hmm. coming, that they already experience something really nice and special. I, I, I'm taking the time for them. I'm, I'm telling everything what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. So I hope that they all go outside the door with a big smile. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, the ultrasound the machine, what we are using is the best one. Uh, right, I see a GE machine. Yeah, it's General right. Electric, right? Yeah, it's the best one of the best. So uh, that's good. I also thought if I'm gonna start a business, it should be the best. So, good job. Yeah. So I think that that you know sonograms of babies and the whole 3D trend and everything that's going on has changed in the last few years. The fact that you're saying that you have a speciality in looking and especially uh, you know hopefully not finding any complications yeah. makes makes the difference. Um, have you seen a trend or anything different in the way that people would like to know? Do people want to know what sex the baby is or um, are there eh? always, yeah. always now? It's not a secret anymore. No, no, it's a big change in the, and especially how they are going to find out the gender. So most of the times I the reveals, know. right? Mm. They sometimes it's within a, a helicopter or the, <laughs> the airplane or like whole. Oh, it's a complete party. I see on Instagram and reels all over. But yeah. fun to watch. Yeah, fun yeah, to watch. Really nice. So mm. I, I hear every time different kind of stories about what's in Peach and Reveals. And how would you like to build out um, the company? Because you've got Baby Glimpse, you've got enough clients, it's busy, it's a great business. Is this something that you would like to bring into more cities or? Um, no, I really want to be exclusive. Mm -hmm. So just one good practice in Lava. Mm -hmm. Um, I also still want to do it by myself mm -hmm. because I'm so passionate and if people are coming, I really want them to have the best experience. Right. Uh, people are especially calling for you. Yeah. For yeah. Somebody else or for the, the name, they call for Shaki. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If people manage uh, uh, an ultrasound, then they specifically ask for Shaki. Mm -hmm. yeah. But since she's the only uh, worker here. Well, yeah, there's only, you can only help one person. And to know that, that people uh, have asked for her. So um, good. You know that she's the yeah oh, that's good you're the brand you're the brand and you're the it's a very personal thing of course with babies yeah, so what would you two say obviously you have both have a career you have a career together you have children you have a business for couples um thinking about relocating and going abroad or for couples who are coming back and even in the professional industry whether it be sports whether it be you know in the miss background whether it be in the business background What's the most important tip you would give both of them before traveling or before coming back? Oof, the best tip. Before they are on the trip. Uh, you can yeah. do both before coming back or either before leaving the Netherlands. I think uh, build a social life. Um, also my friend. I, I heard so many couples that, uh, for example, uh, uh, the guy comes in to play football somewhere. Mm -hmm. the, the wife has to come with them because uh, obviously they're together mm -hmm. um, and then he has a good life, a good experience mm -hmm. and, uh, and on the pitch every day training with his mates 
but the wife is sitting at home doing nothing. Uh, yeah, I'm bored. And it's well, like about that. I want to go back to wherever, wherever they come from. Yeah. And I think like if you socialize, if you build a network there, if you have something to do, like she did in Scotland, you know, with the modeling. Absolutely. With the uh, fashion store, then uh, she builds up her own circle with friends and people that she yeah. can hang around with. Too. Right. So, and that's why she had an amazing uh, time over there. Yeah. No, I, mean, I had a great time as well because she was having a good time. Right, right. It made me less um, focusing on uh, the negative sides of, of being in a different country. Yeah. And it keeps a relationship very strong. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And I think I, it's also a unique experience to go abroad. Absolutely. So try to get to know these people, the, mm -hmm. the culture, mm -hmm. what's over there. And yeah, I think it's so nice. For example, we went for once to uh, with Christmas to Inverness. It's like a really small town, mm. of nowhere with right. these Scottish friends. It was the best Christmas we ever had. Unique and different. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So what you're saying is you're advising and, and, and you know, telling people that expat and international life and also repat life coming back yeah. is actually an amazing experience. Some percent, yeah. I really, truly want to thank the both of you. Thank you for coming um, into your lives, into your professional lives, but also coming into your private lives. And I can't wait. We're going to share uh, how people can go ahead and find uh, Baby Gilliams, how people can contact you both on Instagram and other social media platforms, you know, everywhere, all over the place. I hope it motivates people. Um, I wish you a lot of luck, and I've had a lot of fun with the team today. Thank, thank you very much. Wait. <laughs> I had good fun. Yeah, thank yeah. you. So we've had the opportunity to listen to Derek and Jacqueline on the Talk to Audrey show. I cannot wait for you to see our upcoming shows. Join us on the Talk to Audrey show.